There were two selenium rectifiers in our player and they had to go. That's because they're notoriously prone to failure, which can result in a fire and the emission of toxic fumes. Here I'm removing the selenium which provides the rectified DC for the left channel's tube amplifier. In its place, I installed a terminal strip to mount the replacement components. First, a diode was installed with the anode connected to chassis ground. Next, I installed a resistor. Later in this video, I'll explain how to select the correct diode to replace the selenium, why a resistor is required, and how to calculate the correct value. Finally, I connected the red wire coming from the transformer and temporarily tack the components in with solder. The terminal strip for our selenium rectifier replacement has been installed and populated. It consists of this IN4007 diode and this 5 watt 100 ohm resistor. A resistor is usually necessary when replacing a selenium rectifier because seleniums have a greater voltage drop than a silicon diode and the resistor serves to bring the voltage back down to the original specifications for the unit. Now I've only temporarily tacked in this resistor because we may need to change its value. My calculations tell me that 100 ohms should be just about right but just in case it's not I've made it so we can easily remove this and try some different resistor values. If the 100 ohm resistor proves to be just right, which I suspect it will be, I'll more permanently install it to the terminal strip. So to test the voltage, I have our fluke meter attached to one of the electrolytics that we replaced, which is supposed to provide 163 volts. So let's power up our tape player now to its rated 120 volts and see how well our selenium rectifier replacement circuit is supplying the required 163 volts. Here we go. Put our fluke meter into DC mode and let's power up the player. And let's monitor to the meter. We're looking for 163 volts. Okay, just about there. And our AC input voltage is dead on at 120 volts. So our selenium rectifier replacement circuit is working perfectly. I'm going to power the unit down now and permanently install the resistor and diode. Now let's replace the selenium that provides rectified DC for the right channel. Let's get the old selenium out of there. The selenium rectifier for the 12.7 volt circuit has been removed and for replacement we're going to use two 1N4001 diodes. These are rated for 50 volts at 1 amp so a good choice. The selenium for the circuit was actually two diodes in one and that's what we have here. Each anode is connected to opposite ends of the secondary winding giving full wave rectification and the rectified DC output comes from where the diode cathodes meet and that connects to this red wire which supplies the positive DC output for the outboard solid state amp. Here I've tapped into the jack for the DC output and to do that I had to modify an RCA plug. The hole in the jack is smaller than an ordinary RCA jack so I had to trim this plug down to fit. Let's plug it back in. Here I've connected the leads to my fluke meter so we can monitor the DC voltage and it's also jumped to connect to the outboard amp. This way we can monitor the voltage with the proper load. Now the output to this jack is supposed to be 12.7 volts and with the old selenium installed and a 120 volt input that's exactly what we were getting. Now remember our silicon diodes have a lower voltage drop than our selenium rectifier so voltage here now is likely to be higher. Let's power up the player to 120 volts and see where we're at and then we can determine if we need a dropping resistor to lower the voltage to 12.7 volts. Let's begin. Let's put our fluke into DC mode. 
and I'll now use the variac to slowly power up the player to 120 volts. Okay, good. You can see that the diodes are rectifying the DC signal, and we have an output at just under 14 and a half volts. And again, we're looking for 12.7 volts, so we need to drop this by about one and a half volts. Now to calculate what size dropping resistor we need, we can use Ohm's law. And Ohm's law states that voltage divided by current gives us resistance. So far, we know that our voltage is 1.5 volts, but we don't know our current. So let's use the fluke meter now to determine how much current is flowing through the circuit. To do this, let's change the probe setup for the fluke from measuring voltage to measuring current. The common probe will stay where it is, but our red probe will move to the amp position. Additionally, we need to change where the probes are connected to our circuit. They're not connected in parallel, which is fine for measuring voltage, but for measuring current, we need to put the fluke in series with the circuit. In this configuration, the negative voltage will flow directly to the outboard amp, but the positive voltage from our red wire flows into the fluke first, then comes out of the fluke, and is sent to the positive terminal of the outboard amp. So the current is flowing directly through the fluke so that it can measure that current. Let's put the fluke into current mode, power up the player again, and see how much current we have. And you can see now that we have about 0.29 amps flowing through the circuit. Let's use this now to calculate the size of our dropping resistor. So again, Ohm's law tells us that voltage divided by current equals resistance. In our case, our voltage is 1.5 volts, and our current is 0.29 amps. And 1.5 divided by 0.29 equals 5.17. So now we know that our dropping resistor needs to be about 5.17 ohms. Now resistors aren't just specified by resistance, they're also specified by wattage. So how do we know what size wattage resistor we need? Well, there's another calculation for that, which says that voltage squared divided by resistance equals power in watts. Our voltage of 1.5 volts squared is 2.25, and if we divide that by our resistance of 5.17, we get 0.435 watts, which tells us that we need at least a half watt resistor. Now, for an extra margin of safety, it's always a good idea to make sure that your resistor is capable of 200% of the needed wattage. So we should really have at least a one watt resistor. So let me see what I have for a resistor that's at least one watt and about 5.17 ohms. I've installed a 6.8 ohm one watt resistor into our test setup. It'll provide a little more resistance than the 5.17 ohms that we determined we needed, but 6.8 ohms was as close as I could get using just one resistor. And the other thing is the voltage in my house is frequently above 120 volts, so this little bit of added resistance is probably a good thing. I've got the fluke set up again to measure voltage. Let's give it a try. I'm going to bring the variac up to 120 volts, And you can see that with the dropping resistor, our voltage is now just about perfect, coming in at about 12.5 volts, just a bit lower than the 12.7 that's specified. But as I said, when the player is plugged directly into my household wiring, I'm guessing the voltage is going to be just about right. Let me disconnect the player from the Variac now and plug it directly into one of my house's outlets. Yeah, just as I expected, coming in right around that 12.7 volts. So our little circuit is working great. Let me get it permanently installed into the player. Here you can see the freshly installed selenium replacement circuit for the outboard amp, as well as the replacement circuits for the main amp and our main filter replacements. To stay updated, please subscribe to my channel and click the bell to receive notifications when I release new videos. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. I'll see you soon.